Welcome to the show, Meeting Interesting People. Today, my guest from China, Dennis Nymark. Hi, Dennis. Ni hao. Ni hao. Okay, so um, tell us, um, first of all, we would like to create a portrait of the artist. So hmm. let's start going back. Uh, when you decided that you want to be a ceramist. So, uh, let's start from there. Well, I've been doing ceramics since I was uh, eight years old. My father, Alexander Neymark, would often bring me uh, to the uh, campus with him. Um, and of course, my favorite place to hang out was uh, the ceramic studio. There, the professors and uh, students all were very helpful and very friendly. So um, for me, it was always a comfortable and safe space. Um, when um, in 2007, um, I uh, enrolled at Hofstra University uh, for my um, undergraduate degrees, my initial major was biology and then I didn't actually stick with that. I switched to mathematics within a year. Um, um, but uh, then I kept, um, I nearly finished the math major and then I added on economics major, a Chinese studies major, and finally also a ceramic sculpture major. Um, so I ended up actually uh, doing my undergraduate from 2007 to 2015 quite a long time <laughs> um, and ended up with four bachelor's degrees. Um, by the time I was uh, done with all that studying, um, I figured my initial plans of what to do with life weren't actually necessarily as accurate as um, what my uh, current desires were. So um, instead of uh, going and working as an actuary or doing something related to mathematics, economics, um, I chose to um, do art instead. And I, I can honestly say I don't regret the choice. Okay, so and then you decided to go to China. Yes. Um, so a little bit of um, history about the city I live in. Um, Jingdezhen is the site of the um, first imperial kiln ever to um, fire high temperature. And this is a big deal. So uh, porcelain requires a very high firing temperature. It requires a temperature around um, 1,300 degrees uh, Celsius. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, really hard to achieve with um, simple kilns. Um, the technological breakthrough for uh, creating kilns that uh, can reach these temperatures uh, was, of course, in China. And that's what guaranteed the um, dominance of the ceramic market by China for hundreds of years. Um, now, Jingdezhen is a city that is entirely um, revolving around porcelain. Right now, it's mostly um, consistent of factories and uh, studios, workshops. It's uh, a very artistic place. Um, but in the past, it was um, very much geared towards uh, large scale production of um, everyday goods for common people, um, high quality production for uh, nobility, and of course, um, uh, the very, very best ceramics were produced by the um, imperial workshops and kilns. Um, for example, um, Yu Yao, which is uh, um, one of the surviving kilns from um, five or six hundred years ago. I'm not quite certain about the mm -hmm. founding. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a place filled with history. So this was the obvious place to go for my master's degree. I see. 
So, and, and how the education was going? So it's two years, the master degree. Uh, um, I enrolled in the master's degree program in uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, and I graduated in 2020. Right. Um, considering the classes and um, um, all our coursework, our thesis, all had to be in Chinese. Um, yes. It was quite difficult actually um, to do. And I needed to improve my Chinese to be able to complete it. Uh -huh. um, so a lot of that uh, time was spent um, um, simply studying language. I see. I see. So, and what you need to present uh, by the time you, uh, like, it's your diploma or graduation um, project? Um, right. So, uh, I studied in the ceramic sculpture department, mm -hmm. and uh, the requirements here are um, to have a final exhibition, which um, I created about 10 works. I'm not sure at this point. Um, I created about 10 sculptural works mm -hmm. um, that were all connected by a, a theme. And my theme was uh, um, biodiversity in marine ecosystems and uh, learning to live harmoniously um, with aquatic life. Mm -hmm. um, I had a rather long thesis in uh, both English and Chinese. Um, and I had a, a defense uh, where we had we had three stages of the defense. Uh, first, it was the initial presentation of the ideas and a simple draft. Then um, a larger um, presentation of uh, nearly finished uh, um, thesis, and uh, then there was a final one that is a um, confirmation. Um, I guess uh, that would be the real defense um, where they ask you a lot of questions and uh, you really have to back up your ideas and your methods. So with the presentation you did, it was in Chinese, right? Of course. I see. Yeah. Well, I just can applaud, nothing else. So um, <laughs> listen, and then you decided that you're going to be uh, a PhD candidate. Yes. And now you're involved uh, in that program, and, and it's the same city, the same town? Uh, no, I actually um, decided um, later to delay my entry into that program. I'm going to be entering it soon, but uh, uh, right now Beijing is uh, under um, strict quarantine, so um, it's best if I uh, begin the program in about half a year rather than right now. Um, so the university I'm going to do the PhD at is uh, Tsinghua Meiyun, which is, uh, uh, Tsinghua is uh, one of the 100 top uh, academic schools um, in the world currently. Uh -huh. um, and it's, uh, well, it's one of the top art schools in China as well. Mm -hmm. um, be very uh, top, but the ceramics program there is quite good. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to uh, um, potentially study under Xu Zhenlong, who is uh, quite a famous sculptor. I see. So, and I know that right now, that's your new project. So yeah, I'm uh, creating these splotches of color and then carving into them. Um, I see. I mean, See if I can adjust my light here to be less uh, less bright. Well, tell us more that I know you were participating even in a, a snow uh, sculpture competition. Oh yes, um, yeah, that was the Harbin Sun Island uh, snow sculpture competition in uh, it was uh, January two thousand sixteen. Yeah. Um, and I went with a team uh, composed of um, one professor, my major advisor, uh -huh. um, 
uh, and uh, two other students. And what, and, what um, town it was? Uh, Harbin. Oh, Harbin. So mm -hmm. It's in uh, Heilongjiang province. And it was, um, it's uh, the northernmost uh, region of China. I see. Um, it's quite close to Russia and right. uh, um, it gets quite cold. Um, when we were working there, the uh, temperature for most of the um, four day period were um, about minus 30. Mm. So, yeah, you um, talk about Celsius. Oh, yeah, Celsius, of course. Yeah. Uh, I actually don't really understand Fahrenheit. Uh, so. <laughs> For me. Okay, we, we let us, our viewers to calculate by themselves. So, um, <laughs> and then I know that you did the sand sculpture here in the U.S. years ago. Oh, yeah, um, that was the uh, Point Reyes uh, um, National Seashore um, in California. Uh-huh. Um, and that was, uh, I think that was also 2016 mm -hmm. um, or maybe 2017. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, that was quite fun. Um, I entered the competition there, um, as well. And, uh, um, I entered as a, uh, single, um, person sculpture, um, entry, uh, but I ended up winning the, uh, grand prize for the entire competition, uh, was kind of unexpected actually. Um, so yeah. Oh, and the Harbin competition. Um, my team got second place in the entire competition as well. Yeah. So when you're working with sand, that adds some solution um, you need to use to put this, you know, all this sand together, or or how you work with the ice. I mean, with the snow. Sorry. Uh, in both cases, uh, good old water. So ah. um, with temperatures that low, the snow um, when we would compact it. Yeah. Um, the sculpture itself um, was a dragon um, holding, a, open, holding open a history book. Um, we, um, we carved out, uh, it was a three meter by three meter block mm -hmm. of um, no, compacted by machines. This is how I spread these colors, I That's blow pretty. on them. That's pretty. <laughs> um, Right. Uh, so we carved out a couple blocks uh, out of the side so that we can use it as a um, stepping uh, stone. Um, and then we put those same blocks back on the top. Yeah. Um, and they were together by gravity. But then when we have the dragon's head, the um, head obviously has quite a big overhang. Mm. Uh, so a lot of the weight um, is in the front and uh, um, the neck has to be secured. So what we did there uh, at temperatures of uh, minus 30, you pour out water, it freezes within a minute. Um, I see. We work with water, um, we put it in bottles and then we sprayed it along the joints. So oh, I see. one person pulled the head, two were spraying this uh, water along the joints and it basically cements it. Um, at the joints, it becomes ice. Um, and then all the small details like horns, claws, um, and uh, many small objects we added using water. I see, I see. Well, um, what kind of um, clay you use that's mostly like white? This would look like white clay? Right, um, so this is uh, uh, 609 porcelain. Uh -huh. um, and this is considered uh, um, high white porcelain. I see. Um, it's particularly good for casting. So uh -huh. um, these shapes I have here, let me show you a bit. So this is what I'm working on today. Uh -huh. uh, that's my business. Yeah. So you just say hi. <laughs> right. Um, so these are produced in molds and then um, I will carve them afterwards. I can carve them in all sorts of different designs. Um, so here's one I did earlier yeah. today. That's very nice. Um, yeah. Uh, not very So I, I know you were good in um, like a teapot. Oh, yeah. It There's was a big a, collection, right? Teapots. 
and some of them have uh, marine uh, objects. Yes. Some um, creatures of, sure. of the sea. Yeah, let me show you some of the um, teapots I have uh, created in the past. Uh -huh. So we don't have much here right now because we actually just moved into the studio. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, they're covered with funky creatures. Yeah. Uh, so, mm -hmm. yeah. So we also use. Yeah, I know hmm? you. You said to me uh, a while ago that you are um, love the ocean, but right now you live not near the ocean, though. Yes, um, that is a bit of a dilemma. Um, actually, whenever I have um, uh, time, I like to browse the internet and uh, look for pictures of ocean life for inspiration. Um, but hopefully soon I'll be able to regularly uh, visit the ocean again. I see um, that. I went to Hainan and there I saw so much coral and uh, uh, fish, lobsters. I saw feather star. I saw um, all sorts of uh, interesting little creatures and it was great. So that's your biology degree speaking inside. <laughs> oh, I, I never got the biology degree, but um, yeah, that's that's my love of uh, biology for sure. <laughs> yeah, it expresses itself in. So, uh, uh, did did you have opportunity to travel around the China? Oh yeah. Um, so, in addition to making ceramics, I also often uh, do jobs as um, an actor and a model. Wow. Uh, that allows me um, kind of, uh, it allows me many opportunities. For one, I can uh, travel to uh, different cities. Uh -huh. uh, for example, I came back from Guangzhou a few days ago. Um, and uh, also, it lets me uh, expand my ceramic business mm -hmm. because uh, everywhere I go, I very actively promote and I make connections with local artists, local galleries. Um, so it's really, these go hand in hand. Um, the two jobs just help each other. So we will tell your dad here in US that he should not be worried about you. You're doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, actually, when I was a student, I was struggling. It was uh, um, money was quite difficult to come by. Um, mm. There is a very, very, very little uh, legal work you can do here as a student. Right. Um, but uh, once I uh, graduated, um, I started up uh, a studio and now I'm doing quite good. Um, my business partner and I actually recently um, got a business license and we have upgraded, uh, in this year we've upgraded uh, from a 15 square meter space to a 160 square meter space. Well, okay, so. congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, by the way, here's... So, yeah, thank you so much for showing that too during the conversation. Yeah, we will, we will use some videos from Instagram uh, viewers that I mentioned to you uh, to show the viewers uh, more uh, of your artwork, the beautiful one, too. So, Thank uh, you. Yeah, uh, well, you know, we, we wish you the best and um, thank you for your time. I know it's very late there in China and xie xie. Okay, xie. Yeah. Actually, always work late, so it's... Uh... Really no, no big deal for me. Yeah, I know, I know. When, when we were set up the time at the studio, I mentioned that uh, he's a young man, so he will be fine. I know. <laughs> it's all, almost midnight there, so it's 12 hours different. Well, Dennis, mm -hmm. wish you the best. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.